We have with us Stacy Winters. He is the founder of Omaha Food Lovers. There's a good chance you're a member of Omaha Food Lovers because 92,000 out of 1 million Omahans, so 9.2% of all Omahans are members of Omaha Food Lovers. Stacy Winters, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. That's a pretty incredible stat when you say it like that. So. In fact, I think we should round it up. 10%, 10%. of all Omahans are members of your uh, restaurant discussion. It's a really holistic organization. Everybody signed up for themselves, and yeah, they had to be uh, we're st- yeah. We're still getting qualify. 600 new people a week right now, so we still get quite a few. So 600 newcomers a week. So if people haven't been on Omaha Food Lovers, it is a it is a Facebook discussion group, which happens to have blown up. And you can talk about restaurants, uh, favorite uh, menu items at restaurants. A lot of times people will post on there and say, hey, my uh, my mother in law is coming in from Cleveland and she loves this kind of food. Where should I go? And then all of a sudden, like 12 uh, uh, recommendations Easy. pop up within three or four minutes. Exactly. I love the ones that like, uh, yeah, my in-laws are coming in. Where should I take them? It's like, uh, can you give us it's a broad? Can you give us some down? direction? Uh, we usually try to direct them to our best of polls that we've done. So we've did uh, like ninety different polls. So that's that's what we're trying to to do um, when we get people like that to give them good ideas. And so uh, there's plenty of moderators, yourself and and, and yeah. other volunteers that have really um, helped guide. Yes, and, and, and you you really monitor it well too. Thank you, thank you. And yeah. I probably shouldn't say this because a magician should never give away his tricks. But a lot of our ideas for restaurant <laughs> news items uh, at Grow Omaha start on Omaha Food Lovers. Right. No, I mean that's a, a lot of stuff. You know, gets posted in the group. You know, as far as new restaurants coming. You know, it's always about. You know, people are very very much looking forward to the next best thing that's coming out. So there's been a few few new places, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And thank you for our collaboration. It's been a couple of years now. Yeah. yeah. That, um, We've been we went, we went to years. lunch, yeah. which is appropriate. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we exchange information. We exchange uh, listeners and, and viewers and participants. Yeah. And uh, it's all about growing Omaha and making – the culinary experience in Omaha better. Well, Stacy, let's get right into it. Uh, what are some uh, new restaurants that uh, have opened or uh, might be in place since the last time you were on the show? So some new places. Um, uh, Mex- Mexitil is a food truck that operated down in the Little Bohemia area, and they just opened their full-service restaurant at like 16th and Harney. So they just opened that this week. That's, I hate the word authentic, but theirs is probably the most authentic uh, Mexican restaurant I've, I've seen to, I've seen in Omaha, at least their food truck was. They, they did stuff that a lot, not everybody else is doing. Um, there's a place that's opening March 1st off 168th and Q called Backyard Elotes. People are really, really psyched for that one. I, I, the posts for that, that business have blown up in the group. Um, so it's kind of, it's where Dapper Donut was, same mm-hmm. owner as Dapper Donut. Um, but oh, I didn't know it was the same ownership. They're, they're, uh, they're trying something different. So definitely something unique to Omaha. There's no, no, no other restaurant that is specializing in elotes. Um, why do you think there's so many Mexican themed restaurants opening? I don't know. It's, kind of, it's, it's kind of a trend, kind of a. Yeah, I don't know. I think the, yeah, I could, I, I guess I can't explain that, but Avila's Latin market opened up off 108th and, um, what is it? Q? I think it's hundred eighth and so, yeah. yeah, hundred eighth and Q. Um, but it's a great Latin market. It's on the backside of the Roxbury Plaza, so it's kind of hidden back there. But once you find it, you're you're gonna want to you're gonna go back. I mean, the the chips, the salsa, the enchiladas, everything they're making there, taking bake type stuff. It's it's uh, gotten extremely popular, and I think a lot of people in, in the West Omaha area like having something a bit closer. I mean, I I always make the trip down to South Omaha, but it's a, it's nice to have something that's a bit closer, and uh, they've definitely blown up. I was at Jacobos yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Got to get your chips and salsa. Yep, twenty fourth and L. Yeah, um, I think Talis is another one. It's not it's not extremely new, but it's a place in Papillion that's definitely um, getting a lot of buzz. They, uh, I think it's Aaron Macavickus. I think this is. I forget how you pronounce the last name, but he's the chef owner there. Um, I know he's with previously with Railcar and a few other restaurants. Um, but that place is definitely a, you know, a destination spot now in Papillion. I think Papillion's been lacking. At 114th and Highway 370. Yeah, I think Papillion's been lacking that for a while, so it's good to see some uh, restaurants going in there. Um, Black Label is a place in Fremont, so I know we're Omaha, but I'm going to mention it. Because, we cover Fremont. So, because 
because it's another place that a lot of people in the group are making the trek to Fremont for um, to enjoy there. They have like the massive, you know, Instagrammable shakes that, you know, have like a slice of cheesecake or, a, you know, whatever <laughs> on top of the shake. So it's a lot of fun for people to go there. When did that open just recently? It's, I think within, I want to say in the last six months. Okay. I thought it's so. It's yeah. kind of a, I mean, it's a burger joint, but they also do other things. That, other Interesting things name. Um, yeah. Um, the Dave's Cakes is another place that's a bakery that opened up off of like 140th and Millard Avenue over there. Um, he's selling like cupcakes for $2. So he's, 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 uh, he wanted to do something that was, you know, make it still affordable yet, you know, still make some money. And so $2 cupcakes are not massive cupcakes. Um, so I think that's, that's like one. half a crumble cookie. <laughs> um, Simo, the, speaking of Fremont, the <laughs> Drew Stats, the former, the chef at, uh, Dante is opening up an Italian restaurant in Fremont as well called Simo, S-E-M-O. So that's one. Um, another one that's getting some buzz. Uh, everybody's waiting for the next Isla Del Mar to open up off 132nd and Center. They keep teasing us with some of their posts, um, but that's another one coming That'll soon. That'll be a big one. Yeah. Wonton John's is opening up his own restaurant uh, in— Because that was a food truck. Yeah. He's, so he's opening up in Benson where Baked After Dark was at. So that's another one coming. Um, I've, you guys have covered the Mio. People keep asking about when the Mio is going to open up in the former Los Cello Mio location. I think it's last I saw middle of March is when they're targeting. So that one will be coming. I hope people aren't expecting Los Cello Mio's menu though, because it's not going to be the same. They they kind of came out and said that at one point. So if you're expecting it to be the same menu, it's not going to be the same menu. Um, and then I think the uh, Fa 79 is another place off 114th and uh, uh, Dodge in the, in the old Thai pepper space. In the old Thai pepper space. So again, another place that's getting a lot of um, positive feedback on the pho that they offer. So. We need what the pho. It's a change. <laughs> well, now we're going to talk with Stacy Winters about uh, some of the restaurants that he has visited lately. We call this segment "Where Has Stacy Eaten Lately?" Stacy, where have you <laughs> eaten lately? <laughs> well, uh, I have a, a pretty good list here. Um, a catered affair is a re- restaurant. Well, they're known as a catering company, and I don't think a lot of people know that they actually have a restaurant <laughs> off 134th and Stra- State Street, so it's kind of way way north. Um, one of the few places that's doing breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so I think they're open like 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, I've been there for lunch, and I've been there for breakfast now, and the food is stellar. They have some great cinnamon rolls. They actually have really good cocktails too. I got. I recommend the heater. The heater is a, a uh, it's muddled orange fresca and vodka. It's a really really good refreshing drink. Um, I can't wait to visit when the patio is open because they have a really nice outdoor patio too. Um, but they're doing. I mean, all of all of their food. The, the menu's not crazy big, but they're doing everything really really well. They also have like a deli type counter where you can go get like taken and bakes um, and a lot of pastries and stuff like that. You can take to go. Um, so they're they're really knocking it out of the park there. They've got a big event center next door too. Their, their food is fantastic. So um, the next one, which my my I, I might lose my foodie credibility because it was the first time I I, I went there was V Mertz. We went with some uh, friends for Valentine's Day. Um, shout out to Yum Omaha. It's a friend of mine. She has uh, does a lot of food photography um, and food you know write ups and reviews and stuff. So it's a page worth following. But V Mertz was I mean as everybody says I mean it's just fantastic. It's kind of on a whole different level here in Omaha. I I, I think um, I will say the cocktails are great there. The you, know, you got to get the bread when you go there. Um, people recommended the bread and it's like you you know, you'd see why they recommended it um and everything was really really good i think the the most memorable thing was to me was the creme brulee it was probably the best creme brulee i've had it has like a really nice thick kind of sugary shell on top more thicker than most places took a couple times with the spoon to not to break it open so that that's i mean v Mertz is definitely um, a special place that, you know, if you're looking for a, a special night out or a special occasion, definitely uh, book a reservation at V Mertz. Um, Ellie's Chincharo, which is a Puerto Rican restaurant that opened up um, in 2022. Uh, it's in the uh, old banquet hall across from Los Celo Mio, uh, where that, that was at. Um, and the Puerto Rican food, it's, it really does feel like a little bit of a vacation going in there. Just the, vib- the vibrant colors. The daiquiris, the mofongo, you know, all, you know, very, it's just a very, the flavors are just, you know, really, really um, special. So uh, I would highly recommend checking Ellie's uh, Chincharo out too, especially if you just want something completely different you can't get anywhere else. Um, 
The Corvette Cafe is another, which is, it sounds, it's uh, gotten a lot of buzz in the group because it's it's actually located at great, inside Greg Young, Greg Young Chevrolet. A car dealership. A car dealership, right. And so they've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of press. They actually were featured on uh, one of the news channels here lately. Um, is it a burger? Is it, is it like a, is it burgers? And, and I think they've gotten, most of the popularity has been for their breakfast items. Um, but yeah, they do burgers, they do <clears throat> pasta dishes, they do a little bit of everything. Um, so that's a, that's a, a, a cool place to check out. Um, Shug's Comfort Food, which is a restaurant in Old Town Bellevue. We actually went there for my birthday in January. Um, and so they have like, you know, really, really good fried chicken. Um, and just some of that kind of Southern comfort food. Uh, my, my son got some smoked pork chops, um, and really enjoyed those. So the, the mac and cheese is outstanding. Um, so just, it's, uh, another great little spot down there in, uh, downtown, uh, or old town Bellevue. Um, I think Phil's Deli was another oh, one. Oh yeah. There. I, yeah. I'm dying to go there. So yeah, I saw, you know, I saw Sarah Baker Hansen's review from your, your, uh, Grow Omaha page. So, uh, yeah, it was really good. The, uh, the sandwich was, was really, really good. I got the, you know, the pastrami, but you want to go early if you want to get the pastrami cause they do run out. Um, but it was a, it was a really, really good sandwich that I enjoyed. Yeah, we need to get down there. I still haven't tried Phil's either. And we have to go for a Gromaha lunch. Maybe the three of us will check it out and uh, wipe out the pastrami supply <laughs> for the day. Yeah. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family. 